welcome to the No Fear Sock Knitting class online. My name is Denise and today's class is all about the Shadow Wrap Short Row Heel. I am so excited about this, but before I jump in, I just want to give you a little bit of background. Uh, about two years ago, I did a mini series here on the channel called Sock Talk. And my goal with that was to cover three different and basic heels, a heel flap and gusset, an afterthought heel and a short row heel. The first two videos, Heel Flap and Gusset and Afterthought, were both recorded and those have done really well. But many of you have reached out to me about the third class, which was never recorded for the short row heel. And the truth is I never found a heel that I liked enough to teach and that had all of the requirements that I wanted for a short row heel. So I just waited. I decided to wait and until I found a heel that really worked for me and that I was excited about and wanted to teach. I did find a heel, but it, un well, fortunately, unfortunately, it was a copyrighted heel. So out of respect for the designer, I did not teach that. But now fast forward to this year and at the beginning of the year with my first few podcast slash vlog episodes, I did discover a heel. Um, I decided to do a sock exploration and somebody, one of the viewers, one of you amazing viewers out there reached out to me and asked if I had ever seen a shadow wrap heel. And I thought, ooh, th no, so let's go try that. Let's go have a look. And I did, and I went down the rabbit hole and discovered this heel and fell in love with it. It had everything that my super favorite short row heel had, um, but was missing a few steps that just added to it, um, meaning the shadow wrap heel was much more simple. It's a much cleaner, simpler, way to do the heel. There's very little counting involved and you really can't lose your place in it. And the best part for me was the sides were symmetrical, absolutely perfectly symmetrical. And that was, that was it for me. And the all about symmetry is what you do on the right side of your work or the knit side, you have to do on the purl side in order for the two sides of your heel to look the same. I have looked at a German short row heel and other heels and the two sides just don't they don't match and one side would have holes and the small, but one side would have holes and the other side wouldn't. And that just was not working for me. So thank you so much to the person that reached out to me about the shadow wrap heel. I have a pattern out uh, for this heel that incorporates this heel. It is a basic vanilla sock. And also many of you have been asking just for me to publish a basic full length vanilla sock pattern which I have now done, yay. <laughs> and this is the heel, the Shadow Wrap Short Row Heel is the heel used in the pattern. So of course I was going to do a tutorial and here it is. So no more chat, let's jump right in. I can't wait to teach this and I can't wait for you all to learn it. So here it is. This is the Shadow Wrap Short Row Heel. I'm gonna bring that in a little bit closer. Look at that. It is done with what are called twin and triple stitches, which I will teach you in just a moment. And as you can see, the two sides of this heel look the same. They are identical. There are no holes. It is a smooth heel. And as you can tell um, from the way this is fitting the blocker, it is actually a rel relatively deep short row heel. So I find there's less pulling across the instep. It's very, very comfortable, very easy to knit. And again, no holes and your sides will look exactly the same. So let's jump right in and learn how to do it. So I have learned <laughs> uh, from past videos um, to make sure that the yarn is bright enough for everybody to see. So I think we're okay here. This is just a little um, heel sampler that I have designed for myself. Uh, so what I'm basically doing here, I've just got a little bit of ribbing and I'm going to work the heel and then do a little bit more ribbing. And this will just be my sample that I can use and show uh, for both classes and for demonstrations. So, um, yes, so here we go. So what you're going to do, this heel can be used for any size sock, whether it is a child size sock or average, 
you know, size seven, size eight woman's sock or a large 10, 12 men's sock. It can be applied to any, any, any sock uh, and can also be this heel can also be I think I'm a little rusty with my teaching. <laughs> Sorry for all the stuttering, everybody. Um, it can also be substituted for any heel in any sock. The only time it cannot be substituted is if the pattern within the sock is incorporated, uh, the design is incorporated into the heel somehow. But you can swap this short row heel out for any other heel in any other pattern that you're using. So if it recalls for a heel flap and gusset, you can substitute this in. Uh, or if it's a German short row heel, you can also substitute this. Uh, so here we go. What you're basically doing, you're going to work the heel over half of your stitches. I am using two circuit, two sets of circular needles right now, but you can use double points or magic loop. Um, it doesn't, it, the technique or the method does not matter. And what you're doing is dividing, you're going to work the heel over half of the stitches. So I'm just working over the first half of my stitches here. This is 32 stitches and you're going to divide this in thirds. So 32 obviously cannot be divided evenly. So what I will do is have 10 stitches over the center back of my heel. I'm gonna bring this sample back over. So this portion of the heel back here, I'll take it off the blocker so you can see a little bit better. There we go. So this portion of the heel is going to be 10 stitches and then the remaining, so in this case 10, Minus 32 would leave me with 22 stitches, so I'm going to have 11 and 11, 11 stitches on each side, okay? So that is basically how you would do the math for this. You set your number, whether that's eight across the back, you might wanna go with um, six or eight if you're working on a child size or a smaller sock. Um, you may want this to be as wide as 12 or 14 or 16, depending on the size sock. And as long as you then take those that number, out of your total and then divide the remaining stitches in half that is how you divide this okay so let's jump in so as i said this is worked over with a series of twin stitches and triple stitches so you start building the first half of your short let me bring this back again <laughs> you start working the first half of your heel using twin stitches and once you come over, you start working the other side of your heel with triple stitches, okay? And that's gonna make a lot more sense in just a moment, okay? So let's keep that handy in case I need to refer to it again. So we are going to start, and you know I like to do everything in real time. If that is too slow for some of you, please feel free to fast forward. So I am going to start by just knitting across to the last stitch on this side. So I'm going to knit across here. Okay, <clears throat> nice and slow. And as with everything, it's not hard, it's just new. So please take your time. Okay, there's no race, there's no rush. I say this in all of my classes. Learning something new takes a little bit of time. Okay, so I'm almost across and you're going to work across as I said, to the last stitch. So in this case, I'm going to knit 31 stitches. And here is my last stitch. Now let's come a little closer. Can everybody see? I'm gonna use another needle so you can see a little bit clearer and get my finger out of the way. Okay, this is the stitch that I now need to work into that's on the needle. What I'm going to do is lift this leg of the stitch, the right leg of the stitch below, okay? But I'm going to do that with this needle and it's going to feel like I'm stretching everything out. Now, you can do that by picking it up with the right needle and putting it right on to your left. You are then going to knit that and put this new stitch back on the left needle. Okay, so now you have two stitches, what looks like two stitches coming out of that one. Okay, now I'm going to turn. And you wanna just give a little, just a little tug, not anything hard. And you're going to purl 
to the other side. Purl across to the other side. And as always, I'm doing this looking through the camera, so <laughs> it feels a little bit clumsy. But let's work across to the other side. Okay, here we go. You can speed this up a little bit if I'm going too slowly, but I think it's important, especially for beginners. They like to see the entire process, and I am here to break this down for you and make it as easy to understand as I can. Okay, so this is just how I purl. I push with my thumb, so I'm not doing anything different. I'm not hiding the stitches. Okay, so I have three to go, almost to the other side. Okay, here we go. Now, to do this one, here is, let me grab the other end of the needle so you can see what's happening here. Here's where the mirroring takes place. This loop at the base of the stitch on the needle is exactly, is the, is the stitch underneath, okay? So what we did on the other side when we were looking at the knit side, we picked up the right leg of the stitch. In this case, because we're on the purl side, that becomes the left leg of the stitch. I'm picking it up the same way, it's just reversed. So an easy way to do that, I move the last stitch from the left needle to the right, carefully pick up, again, I'm trying to do this looking through the camera, you're going to pick up this left leg, you know what, I'm gonna just do this so I can see what I'm doing here. There we go. All right, I've picked it up with my left needle. I'm going to knit, Pearl, I'm sorry, pearl into that. And now I have two stitches here on my right needle and I'm going to slide those back onto my left. Okay, I have now, I now have a twin stitch on the pearl side back on my left needle and I'm going to turn. So looking at this now, I have a twin stitch on either end and I'm going to keep working back and forth I'm building the first side of the heel, of the short row heel. And that is the shadow wrap, okay? So here we go. We're going to knit across to the other side. Okay, almost there. And what I'm doing again, once I have 11 of these twin stitches on either side of this center 10, then I know I've completed the first half. All right, so we're gonna do this again. I'm gonna do another knit side and another purl side for you so you can see. And then we're going to fast forward a bit. So now I'm working to right before the last twin stitch that I created, here is the right leg of that stitch right here. I'm going to pick that up. Now, as we were doing it, you see, if I'm in this stitch, I'm doing the exact same thing if I were on the purl side, all right? So here I am on the knit side, picking up the right leg of that stitch, putting it on my needle. You can hold it apart by putting your thumb here. You're going to knit into that and then slide that new stitch back on. So now I have two twin stitches, twin because there's two coming out of the one on the knit side of my work. I'm going to turn and I'm going to do that on the purl side. So I'm gonna purl over to the other side. Okay, doing this in real time for you, just like we're sitting together knitting this heel together. Okay, going across. Whoops, I think I went down a little too far. There we go. Almost there. Purling is always so much slower than knitting. Okay, one more stitch. And here I am 
okay one stitch before the last pearl or the first pearl uh, the first twin that I did on the pearl side I'm going to do the same thing again slide this stitch from the left needle to the right I'm going to pick up this little bar right here which is the left leg of the stitch below and I'm going to purl into that and then slide those two stitches from my right needle back to my left okay and then I'm going to turn and I'm going to continue doing that back and forth back and forth until I have 11 twin stitches on this side and 11 twin stitches on the other side and then I will meet you right back in the center so here we are I now have two four six eight ten stitches ten twin stitches on either side two four six eight ten ten twin stitches on either side I have 12 unworked stitches in the center and I need to do one more so I was going to do that here with you now just so you can see it one more time and see what your heel should look like at this point okay so now I'm going to knit across and this will go even quicker because there's less stitches to knit <laughs> so here we go and these little samplers that I've got here I will try to put the pattern for this in the or basic instructions there isn't really a pattern but the basic instructions for this in the description box for you down below um, in case you want to try a heel test drive a heel so to speak but you don't necessarily want to incorporate it into a sock right away okay so here we are I have here's my 11th this is going to be my 11th twin stitch right here this is waiting to be worked so again I'm going to pick up the right leg of that stitch slide it onto my needle hold this other stitch out of place just out of the way I'm going to knit that and slide it back onto my left so now I have these beautiful twin stitches 11 on this side I'm going to turn I'm going to purl 10 stitches 2 3 Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here's my eleventh stitch waiting to be twinned. I'm going to move that over to my right needle, pick up the left leg of that stitch, I'm going to purl it, and then slide the two stitches or the twin stitch back onto my left needle and there are my 11 stitches on the purl side so now we are ready to start working the other half so we've come up one side of the heel we're ready to come over the top and start working the other side of our short row heel and now we're going to turn these twin stitches into triple stitches Okay, so let's get started to do that. So a word on counting. The only number you really have to concern yourself with when you're working this heel is making sure that your twin stitches on either side are the same and that you do have these, um, that your center stitches are whatever number you need them to be. In this case, it's 10. As I said before, it could be 12, it could be 6, it depends on the size that you are making. Okay, so that is it for counting. We're basically done. There's no more counting past this now. So what we're going to do, I am back on my knit side. I just finished the purl, the twin purl. I am back on my knit side and I'm going to knit across to the first twin stitch. okay almost there so this would be my tenth center stitch here is my first twin and you are now going to knit this as one stitch okay just go into it as if it were one stitch so I've now gotten rid of my first twin but now I have to make a triple stitch so again I'm picking up the same right leg of the stitch 
putting it up onto my left needle, just holding these out of place so I don't accidentally knit into them. I'm going to knit that, whoops, knit that bar, split the stitch here a little bit, and slide that stitch back onto my left needle. There are now three stitches, a triple stitch coming out of the lower stitch. Okay, and then I turn, and I'm going to purl across to until I bump into, whoops, another twin stitch. So just purl across. Sorry, the cable got caught on my watch. I'm just going to purl across here. Okay. Here I am now, the first per twin stitch on the purl side. I'm going to purl it. Move these two stitches from my left needle to my right. Just slide them over. Same thing you did before. You're now going to pick up the left leg. You're going to purl it. You're doing the same thing you did before with the twin stitch. I now have three stitches. They're kind of bunched up, but there are three stitches right there. One, two, three. And I'm going to, coming out of one stitch, and I'm going to just slide those. And I'm going down into the back of them to keep them on the knit, sitting on the needle in the correct way. And I've moved them from my right needle back to my left. And I'm going to turn and do that same thing again. And now I'm creating the other side. As you can see, it's starting to, I'm starting to sort of bend over now, bend over the top or come over the top, knit over the top. And I'm going to work until I get to the triple stitch I just created. So you're making triple stitches and then getting rid of tri triple stitches. So here I am at the first triple. I'm going to knit that all as one stitch, knit all three as one stitch, and create another triple stitch in the next twin. Put that up on the needle, knit into it, Slide that stitch right back onto the left needle. There is another triple stitch. And as you can see, I am now creating, it's already had, it has the little pocket for your heel. It's already starting to fold over. That is my short row. And I'm going to continue eating across these by continuing to create a triple stitch and a twin. I'm going to knit this, create a triple stitch, keep going back and forth, back and forth. So I'm gonna do that on this side. I'm going to purl across until I purl over to the next triple stitch. There it is waiting for me. There's my triple. I'm going to purl all three stitches as if they are one going to move this twin stitch over, pick up the bar, I'm going to purl into that, and then move all three of those stitches by ducking down in the back, back onto my left needle. And they're all bunched up, but there are three stitches there, and I'm going to turn. And I'm going to continue doing that until I have reached the first twin stitches that I created, and then I will show you how to return to knitting in the round. But let's do it one more time together so everybody can see that purl stitch again. I am in no rush. Some of you like things to go a little bit faster, so you can just move ahead if you need to. And those of you that want things a little slower can just stick with me and we will knit together. So here I am to the next triple stitch. You're going to knit that as one. I'm going to lift the bar on the other twin, knit into it, 
and slide that, whoops, split the stitch, slide that stitch back onto my left needle. There is my triple. I'm going to turn. And as you can see, look at that, we have our heel forming. So I'm going to continue doing that until I get back down to one twin stitch on either side and I will meet right back with you. So we are now down to one twin and one triple stitch on each side. As you can see, we have created our heel right here. Look at that. And as you can see, it looks as if the stitches are just sort of running almost in like a backwards C formation. And they're doing that on this side. And then you have the regular C formation on this side. And they match perfectly. There are no holes. Let's take a look at this side. No holes and the two sides look the same. So let's work across now together and we will finish out this shadow wrap short row heel. So I am now going to knit across. I am on the knit side. Okay. Oops. There we go. Almost to the other side. Okay, just smoothly knitting. Almost there. Okay, so I have one more stitch. So I am back to my triple stitch. I'm going to knit that and work one last triple, work a triple stitch in that last twin. Slide the stitch back on the needle and we are going to turn. Make sure you hold on to that so your needle doesn't slip out. And we are going to purl back to the other side and do the same thing when we get to that triple and twin stitch. time, doing this in real time, so everyone can knit along with me if they like. Okay, almost there. Okay, getting there, getting there, getting there. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with me, everyone. Okay, so here we are at the last triple stitch, or second to last. I'm going to purl those together. Move these over, pick up that little bar or strand. Oops, purl that. And then I'm going to slide those three stitches back onto the left needle. And now I'm going, oops, yeah, no, I did it. And now I'm going to turn. Okay. So as you can see now, we have a triple stitch here and a triple stitch here. So in order to complete the short rows, okay, so we have the same number of rows on one side, on this side of the short row that we do on this side, we are going to knit across and knit this last triple stitch. We are just, we are now, basically we have completed all of the short rows and we are going to return now to knitting in the round. So I'm going to, just a little tug, and I'm going to knit, whoops, went in the wrong space, and I'm going to knit across. As you can see, you can't really get lost with this 
or forget. If you put this down suddenly and you pick it back up, as long as your yarn is always on the right side of your work, um, not on the right side, but as long as you're moving in this, in this direction, if you understand what I mean, you can't really lose your place. So this is what I'm trying to say is this is an easy sock heel to put down if you need to put it down and then pick it back up. You won't, you won't get lost. So I'm almost there. Okay, my last triple stitch. I'm going to knit that just like I've been doing. Okay, and now I'm done on this side. Now if I were to purl back again, that's one extra row. So you're going to get a hole and a gap right in here. So once I finished on the knit side, once I finished that triple stitch, I am now going to turn my work. Okay, whether you're on magic loop or two circulars, magic loop DPNs, once you've completed that last triple stitch on the knit side, you're going to knit across. You're returning to knitting in the round. So I would now be on the instep, okay, of my sock. I don't have to pick up any stitches in this intersection between the needles. What I will do is make sure this cable's coming underneath so I don't create a hole or space. Give a little extra tug to close up any gaps or openings. And I'm going to knit across the top or instep of my sock. I'm just going across here. There we go. So that other triple stitch that I would have purled will now be knit. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So I'm almost to the end of my instep stitches. And I'm going to turn my work and just continue knitting in the round. Okay, you're going to do the same thing, just give a little tug to make sure there's no space. Okay, I'm going to go into that last triple stitch. Whoops, grab here. I'm going to knit that close to the edge. When I go into the next stitch, make sure that cable is underneath. Give a little extra tug and I'm going to knit across. And that's it. Your shadow wrap short row heel is now complete. There's no space. There's no holes. I'm going to finish this round and then I'm going to put this on a little mannequin so that you can see what this looks like. But there it is. Shadow wrap short row heel. So here is the heel. This little sample is now on a mannequin foot, so you can see the stitches. That is one side. This is how it looks, how it sits on the heel across the back. And here is the other side. There we go. And that is your shadow wrap short row heel. What I'm going to do now is just do a couple more rounds plain um, and then return to the ribbing and this will be my little sample um, to use for teaching, uh, which you can do for yourself if you want to sample a particular sock, as I said before, or a sock heel without committing to knitting it into a full sock. But here it is, Shadow Wrap Short Row Heel. And there you have it, everyone, the Shadow Wrap Short Row Heel. Oh, <laughs> it is such a beautiful heel. It is so symmetrical, it's just, beautiful and again the fit is just wonderful i hope you enjoyed this tutorial today um please let me know your thoughts i would love your feedback um yes if anything was unclear please leave everything in the comments for me down below the sock pattern sock exploration <laughs> the shadow wrap heel uh is now available and i hope that you all enjoy let me know what you think Thanks so much for joining me today for this class, everybody. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye, everyone.